Did God reveal to the prophet Isaiah a clue as to where we might find the very first and most amazing prophecy ever revealed in the Bible? Listen to Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 and see if you can discover the clue that unlocks the mystery location of the Bereshit prophecy. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Are we to understand these words of God literally? Were there events ordained in heaven that both have and will unfold on the earth that were declared by God in the beginning? If God's words are to be taken literally, then where might we find this amazing revelation? Our search begins with the very first word that God revealed in the Bible. This revelation was disclosed in the language we know as Hebrew, the only language in the world that is actually three languages in one. Hebrew is composed of 22 pictograms that are symbols or letters meant to be assembled to form ideas that we call words. Hebrew is also a number language. Each of the 22 pictograms are also numbers that each has a meaning, a meaning based on how that number is used in the Bible. Finally, we have the phonetic Hebrew language, the oldest language in the world, a language that has been miraculously preserved and is spoken today by a people who have been miraculously preserved and living once again after thousands of years of dispersion in the promised land of Israel. The existence of Israel and the preservation of the Hebrew language is proof positive that you can take the Word of God literally. Take a look at the graphic representation of the very first word that God spoke to Moses the prophet who chiseled it into stone letter by letter over 3,400 years ago. Keep in mind that Hebrew is written from right to left. Do you recognize the very first word revealed in the Bible? It is Bereshit, the Hebrew word we translate into English as in the beginning, and it's found in Genesis 1.1. It is in this single word Bereshit that is literally translated as in beginning that we will discover what God revealed about the end from the beginning. In order to recognize the prophetic significance of the six-letter Hebrew word Bereshit, we need to figure out the meaning of each of the six letters or pictograms that were from the very beginning and are to this day embedded in the language that God created in order to reveal His living word to mankind. Bet. Bet is the very first letter or pictogram revealed in God's word. Bet is the pictogram of the floor plan of a house or tent that brings to mind the idea of a home. Bet is also the number two. Let's begin unfolding the most amazing revelation ever disclosed in the Bible by asking the one question every child would ask if he saw a picture of a tent. Who is inside the tent? The letter bet pictured as a tent is also the one letter in Hebrew that is literally translated as in or inside. So perhaps asking who is in or inside the tent is not such a silly question. Just who is inside the tent? Perhaps the next Hebrew letter will give us a clue. Resh. The letter Resh is the symbol of a head that brings to mind the idea of the head person or prince. Resh the second letter in Bereshit is also the number 200. 200 is the number that is used in the Bible to declare the all-sufficiency of God and the complete insufficiency of man. Amazingly, the first two letters in the word Bereshit is the Hebrew word for son. Bet Resh, pronounced Bar, is translated son in Hebrew. So now we know who is in the tent. He is someone's son. He is also the head person or prince. But whose son is he? The third letter in Bereshit gives us the answer. Aleph. 
The third letter in Bereshit is Aleph, pictured as an ox. Aleph is the symbol of the strong leader, pictured as an ox. Aleph is also the number one. It's not surprising that Aleph is the first letter in Elohim, the name of God first revealed in the Bible. Aleph is a picture that is ideally meant to convey the idea of God, God the Father, the strong leader that guides and directs his family. But wait, there's more. When we add Aleph to the first two letters in Bereshit, we discover another Hebrew word. Bet Resh Aleph, the first three Hebrew letters in Bereshit, is also the Hebrew word for created or creator. So who is in the bet or tent? The bet resh. The son is in the tent. Whose son is he? He is the bet resh aleph, the son of God. But he's also the bet resh aleph, the creator. Sheen. Sheen, the fourth letter in Bereshit, is pictured as teeth. Teeth press down, crush, and destroy. Sheen is also a signature letter, the one letter that God uses to signify his special ownership of something. Sheen is also the number 300. 300 is an amplification of the sacred number 3. 3 means divine perfection. 300 signifies a divinely appointed blood sacrifice that results in victory over death. Amazingly, we find another Hebrew word nested in Bereshit. Sheen, the fourth letter in Bereshit, is also the last letter in the Hebrew word Resh. Notice that the single Hebrew letter Resh, that is the second letter in Bereshit, is also the three-letter Hebrew word Resh, spelled Resh, Aleph, Sheen. Resh, the three-letter word, confirms the meaning of the single letter Resh. To be clear, Resh is not only the name of a letter, it's also a three-letter word that means prince, or head person, or first in Hebrew. Now I want to show you something that's very important. Remember the Hebrew word bar translated as son? The word that we found nested in the first two letters in Bereshit? Notice that in the word bar, the resh, or prince, is in or inside the bet. He is inside the tent. With that in mind, we must ask why God put both the single letter Resh and then nested the three letter word Resh in Bereshit. Let me share at least one obvious reason. The reason is that the Lord wanted us to notice something. He wanted us to notice that the Resh Aleph Sheen, the prince, has come out of the tent. The prince has gone out of his home. A picture is worth a thousand words. The prince who was inside the house is now coming out of the house. Are you starting to understand how God communicates with his children? For of such is the kingdom of heaven, our future home. Why is the prince coming out of the tent? The next three pictographs that compose the Hebrew word Bereshit give us the answer. If sheen, the picture of teeth, means to crush and destroy... Then we must ask, is the Son of God coming out of the tent to be crushed and destroyed? Or is he coming out of the tent to crush and destroy? Or could it be both? Yod. We'll begin to unravel this mystery as we look at the Hebrew letter Yod, the fifth letter in Bereshit. Yod informs us that something amazing is going to unfold on the earth, something that will mark the end of one age and the beginning of something new, a new beginning. We know this has something to do with the prince coming out of his home in heaven, the prince coming out of the tent. Yod is the tenth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Ten is an important number because the primary meaning of the number ten, Yod, gives added spiritual significance to the picture Yod, the picture of the hand doing a divine deed. Yod, the number 10, is one of four sacred numbers, and it means ordinal perfection. The picture of Yod, the hand and the arm, informs us that God has ordained a plan in heaven, signified by Yod, the number 10, that is going to unfold as a mighty deed that is accomplished on the earth. Consider the number 10 for just a moment. Zero is not a number. In God's language, zero is a placeholder for something else, and that something else is most often 
time. So now we know why the prince has come out of his heavenly home. He is coming to earth to accomplish something his heavenly Father planned and purposed in heaven that will happen on the earth at the appointed time. But what is that something? The answer is revealed in the final letter of Bereshit. Remember that Bereshit is the first word in the Bible. Notice that the last letter in Bereshit is Tav. Tav is the 22nd and final letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Whatever this something is will bring an end to one thing, as it begins another. Tav. Tav, the final letter in Bereshit, is pictured as a cross. To be clear, the earliest Hebrew pictogram display this Hebrew symbol or letter as a cross. The pictogram displayed in this article is a faithful representation of the earliest Hebrew letter Tav pictured as a wooden cross. Tav, the last letter in the Bereshit prophecy, informs us that the divine deed ordained in heaven, number 10, will fulfill a covenant that will be revealed as a sign that is literally pictured as a cross. This sign will mark the center point of all human history from God's perspective. Everything that happened before this sign was sovereignly ordained in order to set the stage for this one single event. This is the one event that God considers the single most important event to happen on the earth, and God has ordained it to happen at exactly the precise appointed time on his 7,000-year calendar for mankind. Everything that happens going forward from this sign, the sign of the cross, is as a direct consequence of this epic event. Whatever man may think is important pales in significance to what God thinks is important. The cross marks the spot from which we can forecast every epic event that God has planned for mankind in the future. The sign is now history. And the answer to why did the prince come out of the home in glory has been revealed. The Son of God left his home, his home in heaven, to come to the earth in order to accomplish his heavenly Father's plan and purpose to redeem mankind. This accomplishment took place on a rude wooden cross that lifted up the Son of God on a mount we know as Calvary. This accomplishment reversed the covenant that man had entered into with death and hell and opened the door and fulfilled the covenant that God had made with His Son to redeem man and become the very door that leads to the place that Jesus said He was going to prepare for all those that love and trust Him. All those that have been redeemed by the atoning sacrifice of the perfect Lamb of God are now destined to enter God's home, prepared by Yeshua for those He redeemed with His precious blood. Bereshit is all about home, and it's all about new beginnings. The central beginning, in view, has now been revealed, but there are more. Has the Bereshit prophecy been completely revealed and fulfilled? The answer is not even close. The Bereshit prophecy has only been partially revealed, and has not been completely fulfilled. So far we have answered the question, who? We have been introduced to the central person in the Bereshit prophecy, the central personality in all man's history. We now know the name of the Son of God, the Prince of Glory. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach. His name is Jesus the Christ. Do we understand why? Yes. Man is a result of the sin of Adam and our own sin are in bondage to the curse of sin and under the wrath of God. The Prince of Glory left his heavenly home to atone for our sins so that we might be justified by his sacrifice and have eternal life and enter into the home that Jesus has gone to prepare for us. There is another why that has not been answered. Why has this prophecy been hidden for almost 3,500 years? Why is it being revealed now, nearly 2,000 years after the cross of Calvary? Why now? The Bereshit prophecy clearly reveals the greatest beginning of all time. It's not the six-day creation that's in view, but the beginning that ends man's covenant with sin and death and makes a way where there was no way. The way that's been opened for us to enter our home in heaven, 
opened by the only begotten Son of God, who is the Prince of Glory, the Son of God who left his home in heaven to come to earth as a servant in order to joyfully accomplish his heavenly Father's plan and purpose to redeem fallen mankind in order that we might be invited into his home. The Bereshit prophecy notifies us that this divine deed would be accomplished on a wooden cross, and it reveals much, much more.